from my own observation that mm. men tend to step back when they see the woman doing more. Exactly. And you will find that a lot of men will actually tell you that the reason I'm having an issue or I'm not really present is because I feel useless. I tell women, and I've spoken a lot about this in my one of my books, that... Uh, even in the house, yeah. when the bab imeungua, yeah. if you are a woman, even if you're action oriented like uh, Zev's wife, yeah. don't be so quick to go and fix it. Ask Absolutely. the man to fix it. Yes. That's true. Let him do it. I Give have, him the space to I do it. I have a friend who has an entire degree in <laughs> IT, yes. and she acts like she doesn't know what a flash disk exactly. is. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's a smart exactly. woman. Exactly. Right? In the whole time. <laughs> yes. She will be the tech yes. guru. I was she will be the tech guru. She's like, baby, what is this? She really knows what do I the do <laughs> she knows the deal like at <laughs> home. Mm. Tell the man, tell them yeah, this is broken. The sink is not working. The taps are not working. Yeah. yeah, let him really want yeah. To do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Mr. Kigwa, let's talk a little bit about this societal, societal pressure that um, a lot of men have that's even pushing them into depression. I find it interesting that men, even in their 40s and their 50s, um, still have comparisons that are killing them. When you feel that Bogwa has this and you don't have this, it becomes a problem. Um, yeah, why don't you tell us your thoughts on that? And actually, it doesn't even begin at the age of 40. Mm. At the early age, boys are always trying to compare themselves. In right. fact, I, there are some things I wouldn't even want to mention in, mm. uh, in front of these cameras mm. uh, about they compare mm. and they try to evaluate their, how they are and how they appear to the peers based on what the others have and what they don't have. And one of the, going back to your straight question is men fall into depression because of one thing. Yeah. Because women, when they have a problem, when a woman is faced with the same challenge that a man is faced with, a woman soliloquizes or talks yes. out to other people. And you know, talking out is actually therapeutic by right. itself. It is. But what we do as men, we don't talk about our problems and our challenges that we face. The, what we do is we look inwardly. Yeah. We don't talk. Because a man cannot talk if he doesn't have a solution on yes. what he wants to do. Absolutely. So we tend to go into a closet. We, we keep quiet. And the more you keep quiet, the more depressing thoughts come. Yeah. As, and I, like I mentioned, one, two, three things that happens in the life of a man that are so depressing. One, if he loses his job. Mm -hmm. Because that is what he did. That's how he evaluates who he right. is. When, a man, when men are traveling, if even yeah. in an aircraft, yeah. I meet with him, so what do you do? Mm -hmm. So do you yeah, have a business you... card? <laughs> so yeah, what, where, what are you going to do here? Yeah. What we do is very important. So when a man loses that, yeah. he's down. Right. Second thing is, when a man is sick. Yeah. Third thing is, when a man loses one of his parents. Yeah. Those are low moments, but we don't talk out. So what we encounter, and I'm sure this is what our, these, these guys do, is to help men talk. Right. You know, give a safe space for men to be able to talk out their issues. Because the more you talk, the more you get healed. Right. I remember one time I was sitting in my office and I was told, there's a guy who wants to see you. And I said, who is it? I was told the name. And I didn't know him. So yeah. I said, come in. So he came. We sat down from 1.30 in the office up to 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And all what he did was talking to me. Talking mm -hmm. to me about issues he was having in his marriage mm -hmm. and you know how the wife had taken everything from the house and disappeared and all that. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me he was contemplating suicide. Oh, wow. But I didn't tell him. I, I didn't offer him any help. But all yeah. what I told him, I said to him, I remember what I told him. I told him, I don't know how to help you, but yeah. to, say that there is, to say that there is no way out of this situation is to say that Jesus is not a way. That's all I said. Yeah. And he went. Five years later, yeah. I was here in town yeah. and in a conference, and a guy comes to me holding a mug of coffee and says, excuse me, you're Stephen K. Y. said yes. Do you remember me? I said, well, I don't. He said, I came to your office one day and you really helped me. And I said, how did I help you? He said, you sat there and just listened to wow. me. Wow. We, Mr. Kigwa, as we wind up, your last point, I want you to speak to the mummies out there, especially the single mothers who are raising sons. We've talked a little bit about massaging. Some are over massaging. Fact, <laughs> the massage needs to stop now. It's time to move out. <laughs> Yes, sir. And empower our boys. Okay, what do you have to say to them real quick so they can give you an opportunity uh, to I say goodbye? I think what I could say is, I, yeah. number one, I really want to appreciate the mothers who are actually playing the role of being a mother and a father at the same yeah. time. Either okay. maybe because the father passed on or he's not involved or he's absent. Yeah. But I think they are forced to do some role that they're really not prepared to do mm -hmm. because they have never been boys themselves yeah. to raise up a boy. But okay. I have seen wonderful women who have done fantastic job to raise up sons. Yeah. But what I would encourage them also, try to involve some... Yeah. You know, they had your mm -hmm. brothers into this boy mm -hmm. because one well done from a man yeah. means much more to a boy than 29 kisses from the mother. Okay. Yes. I love it. Okay.